عليكم هاي تو ذا روم وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته ثانك يو فور ايفرون فور جويننج سو ذيس برزنت اي اكشلي اكسباندد ذا سكوب اوف ذا برزنتيشن ا ليتل بيت جست ا كايند اوف جست كايند اوف فلف ات اب اند اند جست انكلود سم ثينجز ذات ايف ذات ايف نوتيسد ان ماي ستاديز نوت ايفري ثينج اوف كورس اتس نوت غون تو بي اكزاستيف بت جست سم ريلي انتريستينج ثينجز ذات اي ثينك ان شاء الله تعالى will be beneficial and maybe uh, will spur some uh, more intelligent brothers, more observant brothers to maybe undertake similar studies um, in the future, inshallah. As I know with my, um, with my minimal dedication and my, uh, and my maximal procrastination, I, I, I always sound like freaking Jesse Jackson when I do these things. But uh, with, yeah, then I probably should have been uh much more advanced in this in this project but alhamdulillah uh, hopefully where it is now is, is going to be beneficial for people nonetheless uh so this presentation is going to be about just how the quran um and of course a lot that by, by virtue of that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows complete mastery and um and often a, a corrective uh like a corrective ambient uh, uh, tertiary way of how it corrects the hebrew the hebrew of the of the torah and how it utilizes arabi to show familiarity with the hebrew of the torah because as we know the prophet sallam was completely unlettered um maybe with the ability to write his own name you know very very minimal things like most arab back in back in the uh, the seventh century it was not a literary environment in fact this this phenomena has caused many you know skeptics and uh critical scholars to try and push forward the um the dating of the quran because they're saying it's impossible that the quran could utilize so many sources including the bible because the bible was not translated until at least a, a century later uh while being in in the in the mid 7th century or the early 7th century so these are people like like schumacher and, and others uh who you know it's, it's a horrible argument they utilize um their, their misunderstanding of uh, carbon dating and and um, other internal evidences in the quran and they've been pretty much refuted but this this idea that the quran uh, quran's uh, intertextual prowess is displayed like very prominently is what leads a lot of skeptical scholars to say you know what this is this is highly unlikely that that this quran could have been a product of that time and of course our answer is uh is that it's from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course first and foremost so um let, let's get right into it the the first the first thing i want to i want to uh highlight is something that's already been kind of uh recognized by others who who have seen this passage but it's the the birth of uh ishaq the birth of ishaq in the quran and there's a, a very like um a very uh subtle peculiarity that i want to highlight that i don't think anybody has so in in the birth of ishaq Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um he he relays it very much similar to the story in Genesis so um the angel comes to uh Sara and and Ibrahim and Sara is like very uh you know very surprised and shocked and so she says um th- so there's two things I want to highlight here so she's very shocked and surprised and she says basically how I'm very old I'm I'm worn out as the Hebrew says and my my lord here is old as well so how can i have a son and she laughed and she laughed okay and uh and then god gives her glad tidings of isaac and the the word play here or the turn of phrase or the double entendre or or however you want to put it is between the word dahika or it's haqa and isaac isaac's name which means the laughter so that's that's exactly how the hebrew the hebrew recognizes the they turn a phrase for for laughter with Isaac right and she calls her her uh her husband lord so it's basically very minimal uh like one to one kind of reference one to one and this is a hebrew text this is a hebrew text that's been among the people for a very long time but this is how the quran says it the quran says wa mra'atuhu qa'imatun fadhikat fabashshurnaha bi ishaq wa min wara'i ishaq yaqub and his wife was standing and she laughed and so we gave her glad tidings of isaac we gave her glad tidings of isaac so the laughter and isaac thing right there one to one and so we gave her glad tidings of isaac 
And behind Isaac, well, I mean, what are is Haqi, Yaqub, like after him, would be Jacob, would come from his, from his genealogy, uh, Jacob. And what's beautiful here is that the, the meaning of Yaqub comes from the Hebrew, which means Ka'aba, which means to, to hold a heel or to, or to be behind something. And so here the, the Arabi literally uh, plays a tribute or a homage to the Hebrew of the meaning of the name Jacob, Yaqub. So after Yaqub or behind, uh, behind Isaac came Jacob, whose name is very similar to uh, behind something. So it shows very, very, very like strong familiarity with the Hebrew language. But that's not all. The, uh, Sara, his wife, also is a Hebrew word. And just like in Arabic, many of these Hebrew terms have meanings. Do you know what uh, Sara's name means, Ahmed? Go ahead, Achi. Literally, I'm, I'm, I'm making notes. I don't know if you can see my... Yeah, I'm making notes. <laughs> so go ahead. Cool. Tell them. <clears throat> Sara's name is the feminine for Sar, which means prince. So Sara's name means princess or somebody who has authority. And the Arabic word for a woman who has authority is Qa'ima. Wa mra'atuhu and his wife Qa'ima. Which means a, a ruler or somebody with authority. Of, so the Qur'an shows more familiarity with the Hebrew meaning of Sarah's name than the actual original, quote-unquote, original uh, Hebrew, which does not even, does not even, like, notice this, um, this, uh, you know, this play on words. 